Hello and welcome to the Getting Started with Oracle and .NET Quick Start. Today we'll show you how to quickly get set up so that you can build and run an Oracle and .NET application. Now the starting point will be the Oracle .NET Developer Center web page and you can see the URL for it right there on your screen. Once you go to that web page you can download a package of software called ODT with ODAC. Now this package includes, among other things, the Oracle Data Provider for .NET, which is our ADO.NET data provider that lets you connect to Oracle from your .NET code. It also includes something called Oracle Developer Tools for Visual Studio. Now that's an add-in for Visual Studio which is required if you want to use the built-in Visual Studio data designers such as Entity Designer for Entity Framework Applications, and also table adapter configuration wizards if you're writing applications that are populating data sets. So let's open up a web browser and enter in otn.oracle.com slash .net to go to the .net developer center web page. Now bookmark this page because it's a great place to get the latest news, um, downloads, tutorials, links to documentation, help forums, etc. So once you're in here, click on the Downloads tab, and the Downloads tab will include um, ODAC with Oracle Developer Tools for Visual Studio. So click on that, and once you're in there, you'll see the latest software that we have available. So um, accept the license agreement, and download the latest version that's available to you. It may not have looked exactly like this, but download the latest version. ODT with ODAC that's available to you. Now you'll need a OTN username and password so if you don't have one create an account and give it your information so that you can have an account on the site and then go back and uh, log in using your username and password. Once you do that you can download the software and then you're going to extract the zip file into the directory of your choice. Once you've done that, um, open up the directory and find setup exe and run that. And when the install screen comes up, choose the language that you'd like to use and if you see a screen asking which user account to use for services choose the one that you'd like uh, choose the location where you'd like to install and you should install at the very least Oracle Data Provider for .NET and Oracle Developer Tools for Visual Studio you might also find use with the documentation and the uh, samples Tell it which version or versions of Visual Studio you want to integrate with. And you'll see a screen asking if you want to install on a machine-wide level or not. This has to do with putting things in the GAC or modifying machine config. We'll choose not to install on a machine-wide level. And depending on your configuration, you might see a screen asking you to enter in connection information. It's optional. Once you've gone through those screens, you'll get a confirmation window. And once you click install, uh, some time will pass while everything is installed. And we've successfully installed. Now let's run Visual Studio. In Server Explorer, find the Data Connections node and choose to add a connection. In the connection dialog that pops up, click on the change button next to it. And in the next dialog, find ODP.NET Manage Driver. You will need to see ODP.NET as the data source 
to be able to use any of the features that you'll see today. So provide the username and password for your database and depending on your configuration you might have TNS aliases available to you to, you to connect but most likely you won't. So to make things easy let's use Easy Connect. So enter in your host name for your database, the port number, and the service name of your database. And then click Test Connection to make sure that you're able to connect. Now a feature of this connection dialog that's important to know is the Filters tab. So by default you will only see schema objects for your user and you will not see public synonyms. If you want to see more than your user, choose additional users from the list and add them to modify your filter and then update the filter. This will allow you to see additional schema objects from other users. Now click OK and you will connect in Server Explorer and be able to browse your schema and all the objects in it. Now let's show how to create a simple ODP.NET application. So we'll open a console application and I'll cut and paste a simple hello world application that basically connects to Oracle, executes a SQL statement, and fetches some of the data and displays it on the screen. So in order to do this we need to add a reference to our project. Um, so I'll show you where the installer has placed the um, Oracle ODP.NET DLL. So we'll browse to it and you need to find the location where you installed ODP.NET and once in there, uh, also known as the Oracle Home, find the ODP.NET subdirectory, the manage directory under that, and then common and you will see Oracle Manage Data Access DLL. Select that. So now it's added it as a reference to your project. Next we'll modify the using clause to use the ODP.NET namespaces. So Oracle Managed Data Access Client is one of them and the other is Oracle Managed Data Access Types. Finally we need to modify our connect string to connect to Oracle. So we'll use Easy Connect format, which is the host name, colon the port number of the database, forward slash the service name. Once we do that, we're ready to go. So let's build and run the application. and the application connects and runs successfully. This concludes this quick start. Please take a note of the URLs on your screen so you can visit our OTN.NET Web Center, our Twitter account, and our YouTube page for other videos like this one. Thank you for joining me.